Uh, my name is Craig Turnbull. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit um, about my, my recent book, um, A History of British Actuarial Thought. And in particular, I'd like to uh, reflect upon how um, today's um, interest rate environment and the extraordinarily uh, sort of challenging situation that that is creating for, for long-term savers um, and the financial institutions, um, really about how um, we can find um, some historical examples of where similar scenarios have arisen um, over the long term and look at some of the ways in which other um, historical episodes um, have, have seen um, those, those scenarios being, being managed, if you like. Um, so first of all, if we look at um, the interest rate environment today, um, we see that globally, um, for around 35 or so years now, um, interest rates um, have really been on a sort of continuous uh, uh, decline. And interestingly, for, for long-term investors or long-term savings institutions, um, that decline has been uh, noticeable not only at the, the short end of the yield curve, where we've seen lots of um, headlines about, about the fact that we've, uh, for the first time, seen some negative nominal interest rates, uh, but also uh, we see the long end of the curve, um, a really sort of um, enormous fall in rates from um, over you know, 10 or 12 percent uh, back in the early 80s um, to 2 percent or lower uh, today. So, you know, a fall of over you know, 1,000 basis points essentially um, over this 35 year uh, path. Um, now, for long term savings institutions, um, that's a, a scenario um, that's, uh, that can cause a, a huge amount of stress if they're investing assets. Um, a duration that is shorter than, than liabilities. Um, and it prompts, if you like, a, a set of, of, uh, of reactions inevitably from those institutions in terms of how they manage their business, the types of products they can profitably, profitably write, uh, but also how they um, allocate assets and invest their assets um, for this long-term business that has been written um, over the preceding decades and which will remain on their books uh, potentially uh, for, for many years to come. If we look today at how um, asset allocation and insurers is changing, um, it's changing in a number of ways. Um, on the margin, um, some insurers will be taking uh, more investment risk, increasing their investment risk appetite um, to try to enhance yield and maintain returns at levels uh, that have been promised to, to long-term policyholders. Um, but there's a limit to how much that can be done given that these institutions uh, will tend to be highly regulated um, and capital constrained. Um, perhaps um, in terms of more innovation, um, we see a couple of directions being pursued. One is um, a greater uh, appetite to diversify um, asset strategy, to find uh, potentially asset classes um, that can enhance yield uh, uh, whilst diversifying and, and therefore um, only increasing risk um, sort of marginally, if you like, at the portfolio level. Uh, but of course, finding those assets um, is, is not, not easy. Um, um, and the, the final important strand um, to trying to enhance returns in a way which is sort of capital and risk efficient um, has been to rotate out of public liquid asset classes into private, ideally risk equivalent asset classes that may offer some sort of illiquidity premium um, for, for, uh, for, for giving up liquidity. And where uh, life assurers are holding long-term illiquid liabilities, um, they may be in a position where they are essentially running a form of asset liquidity surplus that they can monetize by moving into these illiquid assets. Um, so a range of asset strategy innovations which are being, if you like, incentivized by, by this extraordinary interest rate environment. So if you we, if we look back um, historically, um, one question we can ask is, have we seen an environment like this before? And, and if so, what have insurers done in these scenarios? And uh, can we learn anything from reflecting? Um, on those stories. Um, and, and the answer to both those questions, I think, is, is yes. Um, so there have been at least two noticeable um, episodes where for several decades, uh, long-term interest rates in the UK um, have continually fell. Um, and, and that has resulted in, um, again, sort of these incentives for insurers' asset strategies to be um, evolved uh, to, to perform uh, more effectively in those environments. So the, the first one um, was following the, the Napoleonic Wars, um, where uh, long-term interest rates fell from over 5% to 
um, to around 2% um, between 1810 and 1890. So uh, over a very long period of time, we had this virtually continual fall in long-term interest rates. Um, and looking slightly more recently uh, to the second quarter of the 20th century, again, we see a similar type of dynamic where their uh, long-term uh, guilt yields fell from over 5% to under 3% uh, between 1920 and 1950. Now, in both these scenarios, both these episodes, um, insurers fairly profoundly altered their asset allocation and their investment strategy outlook. Um, in the 19th century case, um, that period was associated with insurers moving from uh, an asset strategy which was uh, really dominated by um, guilt assets um, into one which was increasingly dominated by, by essentially commercial mortgages. Um, so they moved, if you like, into credit risky assets, they moved from public marketable assets into uh, private illiquid assets um, as a way of trying to maintain investment yield and investment return at, at that time, the 3% interest rate that had been promised um, to the vast majority um, of UK with profit policy holders over the course um, of, of that, that century. If we look at the, the second episode in the second quarter of the 20th century, um, there, um, again, we see a fairly radical change in mindset um, from insurance companies uh, where, for the first time um, over that period of time, they started to materially invest in equities. Um, so at the start of that period in 1920, um, life insurers in the UK had around 2% invested in equities. Um, and by 1950, it was up at over 20%. And it's a relentlessly increased um, thereafter. And in both those um, scenarios, um, when we consult the, the sort of history books and, and, and read about the, the sort of peer, the peer group thinking that was happening in both those times, we can find that the low interest rate environment and the challenge that was placing on, on insurance firms to generate the returns that were sufficient to meet um, the returns that they had guaranteed um, over long periods of time uh, to life assurance policyholders, um, that, that yield squeeze um, and potential yield gap um, was a primary driver um, of that, that change, that innovation um, and investment strategy. And if we look today, we can actually see that both those uh, changes in investment strategy um, have, have stood the test of time. Um, in both cases, um, you know, UK, uh, what's left of UK with profit businesses remain uh, substantially invested in equities. Um, if we look at a non-profit annuity business, um, there is a continuing interest um, in, in allocating to, to private assets as a way of generating this illiquidity pre premium um, for liabilities that do not require or demand asset liquidity. Um, so in today's low rate environment, actually, um, these types of strategies uh, remain um, uh, quite um, topical um, and actually in different parts of the world becoming increasingly so. Um, and I think over the coming years um, around the world, we will see long term insurance businesses um, continue to allocate uh, to more of these types of assets um, away from, if you like, the more vanilla uh, risk-free and high-quality corporate bonds that have been historically the sort of mainstay of, of these firms' asset allocations. Um, they will continue to innovate and look for these, you know, illiquid, slightly riskier, diversifying asset classes um, as a way of meeting uh, this yield challenge that's been placed upon them by, by the low interest rate environment. So I think, you know, when we look at these historical episodes, um, it's, it's always um, dangerous, I think, to sort of look at these unique, um, complicated circumstances and, uh, and sort of, you know, point the finger and, and define uh, clearly um, one cause and one effect, and reality is much more complicated than that. Uh, but nonetheless, I think reflecting on these historical episodes um, where we can see that there are some factors and drivers that are similar today, uh, such as this first order issue of these extraordinary low interest rates, um, and how these other generations um, of, of smart and innovative people um, have thought about these problems and come up against the problems that, that we, will, we will come up against as we um, look at these issues in contemporary times. Um, it can be a source of, of, sort of stimulation um, and interest uh, to reflect upon these, these episodes, and uh, I'd encourage you to do so. Thank you.